Welcome back to our latest episode on orphan wells in the state of Texas. Today's episode, orphans are created by design. And? Uh, sure. So I'm Virginia Palacios. I'm the executive director of Commission Shift based in Laredo, Texas. We're a statewide organization. Megan, would you introduce yourself? Of course. My name is Megan Milliken Biven. I am the founder of True Transition, an organization devoted to a just transition. Great. So, uh, you know, we're going to be talking about how operators end up orphaning their wells today. There are uh, specific designs set up in our state systems or our, our state policies that create orphaned wells. And so these are not by accident. Um, Megan, you have a really good way of putting this. Would you kind of tell us the story of how orphaned wells come to be? Well, this is kind of getting back to our first episode, the mystery of the orphan well. And people think of it kind of like, oh, there's a little orphaned well in a basket on the footstep of the, the Railroad Commission of Texas. Like, how did this little bundle of joy swaddled in a blanket, swaddled in a blanket come to be? <laughs> well, you know, it's intentional. And it starts first at a permit to drill. Who gets to profit from the resources of the state of Texas? What is that threshold? And the threshold is you have a pulse. Anyone, it is probably harder to open up a hair salon in the state of Texas than it is to acquire an oil well. So as a consequence, the state of Texas is not doing its due diligence to make sure that these companies are financially solvent and environmental stewards of their their work. You know, when you go to rent an apartment, usually you have to fill out an application and give the landlord your permission to check your credit. Do operators have to do that with the Railroad Commission before they drill a well? No. All they have to do is fill out a form what's called a P5, and on that form is very bare bones information. It's the name of the corporate representative, it's an address, and they just have to keep that, uh, you know, current. So Megan, how does a company acquire a permit to drill? What are the pathways to getting there? So there's two basic ways. There's an application for a permit to drill, and that's so it's a new well. And at that point, it could just be any company. And then there's lease transfers. So a company sells an existing well to another company. Interesting. And so what happens when an operator transfers a well? Is there any additional scrutiny that goes into that process? No. From the Railroad Commission of Texas's perspective, there's no additional scrutiny. There, I think there's some required bonding that's required of the new operator, but beyond whether they're evaluating if that company is financially solvent, if they're capable of plugging that well, whether they're capable of operating that well in, it, you know, in a responsible manner, they don't do any of that kind of check. Okay, and so it sounds like what you're saying is the Railroad Commission should be examining whether a company is financially solvent. What do you mean when you say financially solvent? What would a regulator look at if they were going to determine that a company is financially solvent before they drill? Sure. Do they have enough cash on hand? Do they have enough to plug their wells? That's basically it. Can they actually afford to do that? Okay. And so same thing when you're transferring a well, is that the recommendation? So a transfer of a lease of a well is particularly insidious because think of a well as, you know, a straw in the earth and there's a resource that we sell in a global market. It has value. And so I think of a large operator, they sell that well to a small company. And when they typically sell that that well is when the remaining production doesn't justify the cost of the remaining like you know people being out there to service it it's it's you know it's almost depleted and the remaining production the remaining oil or gas in that well no longer can fund the actual decommissioning plugging and abandonment of that well so it's actually the most dangerous and riskiest time and that is an opportunity for the railroad commission of texas to actually evaluate like okay who is acquiring this well are they actually capable of you know, funding its decommissioning, which is coming sooner than later? Or are they just looting the dregs? Right. So I've talked to um, some oil and gas accountants about this. Um, and, uh, you know, we talked about all the ways that operators can uh, keep getting extensions on plugging mm -hmm. uh, when they have a, a well that's uh, inactive or near inactive. And so they actually said they oftentimes don't even get to that point because they just transfer the well to some other operator who supposedly has lower overhead to operate the well. And so, you know, when you first drill an oil and gas well, you get a lot of production in the beginning, right? But like you're saying, it tapers off over time. 
Um, and you can extend the life of these wells out years and years and years, decades even. And uh, they'll just be producing like at marginal amounts for a really long time, right? And so this is kind of this fragile period that we're talking about where if you have the market going up and down with price swings, if you have a huge market crash, you can have marginal operators all of a sudden uh, going bankrupt, right? Absolutely. And when she says marginal production, this is where I become uncouth and, and give folks a sense of how much they're actually producing. We're talking like a teaspoon of oil, a fart of gas. It is not much. And that is... and. The Railroad Commission allows these operators to just do that indefinitely. And the question we have is, what is the intrinsic public value of letting a company just sit there and a pump jack doing this for 10 years when it's not really meaningfully contributing to national security, energy security anyway? Not only that, but it's potentially causing a cost to the public to eventually have to pay to plug that well later. Of course. And it's probably going to be emitting methane, which is a greenhouse gas that is 87 times more potent than carbon dioxide pound for pound. So it's a really powerful climate for- forcer. Um, you know, and as we've talked about on the last episode, there can be a lot of dangerous problems with these wells that are left around unplugged for a long time. So blowouts, uh, groundwater contamination, soil contamination nation, things like that. Um, Megan, there's this term called fraudulent transfer. It sounds really scary. What does it mean? And how can the Railroad Commission of Texas prevent that from happening? So this is a, uh, a legal and accounting term that describes like what we just described, where a company intentionally discharges or sells a, uh, an asset that is actually a liability to another company knowingly. They know that it's like a junk thing, like there's not much production left in this well, but we're selling this to you to intentionally offload that debt off our books and sell it to you. And it's, you know, it's fraudulent in so much that you were actively deceiving a party. You were uh, misrepresenting what was being sold. Do you think every operator knows that they're intentionally misrepresenting the ability of these wells to produce or do you think it's such an accepted practice that people just think like well this is a legal activity and there's nothing wrong with what I'm doing I think it's the latter it's uh you know there's different ways to describe this process moving down the food chain um is one very common one it's uh yeah there's like a whole companies know when there's a moment when that well is not serving them anymore and they want to offload it off their books because they want to represent to shareholders, hey, we have more assets than liabilities. And there's a whole cottage industry of companies that have uh, grown. And, you know, oftentimes they will go bankrupt because they're not capable of actually dealing with these liabilities. And then it comes to the, the doorstep of the state of Texas. So you said something about investors. So it sounds like companies are... Uh offloading these assets so they can look like they're more profitable than they would have been if they had actually cleaned up after themselves. And investors are seeing that and choosing to invest more into that company so that they can earn a profit. For sure. It's, yeah, they're offloading because there's no benefit. There's no financial benefit for plugging a well for a company. There's none. You know, it's it's just an ex, it's just an explicit cost. There's no profit from it. And so any way they can avoid that, they will. Because their fiduciary duty is to increase profits. And one way to do that is to offload liabilities. But unfortunately for the state of Texas and for the people of Texas, those liabilities usually come back to them. Well, and so we have the Railroad Commission that then becomes responsible for orphaned wells if the the operator who accepted the transfer goes bankrupt, right? And so... um, Well, I think what we want to talk about is solutions because a lot of why we're here today is that there are things within the control of the RRC, there are things in the control of Texas legislature that they can do to prevent all of this. This is all a manufactured problem, but it has a solution. Mm-hmm. And so, Virginia, I was hoping you could speak to some of that. So for one, eligibility. Is there one way we could perhaps screen operators before they acquire a well in the state of Texas? Right. And so I think that some of what we were getting at earlier is that you would expect that an operator that is doing something so big and important as extracting oil and gas, you know, dangerous substances from the earth, uh, would have to go through more of a screening process with state regulators before they are allowed to do that. And so um, one concept that we We've come up with is that um, 
the Railroad Commission of Texas could look at every operator's financial solvency. And what that means is that they could look at uh, the total population of wells that operators have on file with the Railroad Commission, um, estimate the production decline curve for those wells. So we know that wells produce a lot in the beginning and they taper off over time. The Railroad Commission has that data. They could do this analysis. They could find out uh, which companies on average could afford to plug their wells and which ones couldn't. And they could base decisions um, on granting new permits Hmm. on this kind of an analysis. It seems like uh, an agency that is designed to provide oversight would be looking at something this important to make sure that it is preventing pollution and preventing potential costs to the public later on. So they're forcing disclosure to facilitate who is actually eligible to produce, who are the qualified uh, people to oil and excuse me to drill oil and gas. Right, and so not only financial solvency, but also looking at environmental compliance. There was a great report by reporters at uh, Grist and the Texas Observer that came out, and they had this machine learning algorithm where they figured out that uh, you know environmental compliance was one of the top factors for predicting whether operators were likely to orphan their wells in the future. And they predicted that over the next four years, we will likely have 12,000 more orphaned wells in Texas wow. with this model. So um, that's something to look forward to or not. So they look at their environmental compliance records, whether they have, you know, admitted, whether they have spilled anything, and they use that to determine whether they should get a new permit. Right. It's not like the Railroad Commission is coming into this with no information. They are the agency that has all of the data, and they can start to do this kind of analysis to make sure that um, they're giving operators the ability to drill who have actually shown to be good operators. So that would probably reduce the pool of eligible operators or force bad actors to get into compliance. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. (laughs) Sounds like a (laughs) win-win. Okay, so on the next episode, we are going to be talking about how operators can make sure that they have enough money to plug their orphaned wells. And so we're going to be talking bonding, financial assurance, trust funds. It's going to be good. Yeah, bonding's (laughs) out, trust funds are in. Stay tuned.